Hello and welcome to Behind the Build, I Am Biz Edition. My name is Archana Ganesh Lingen. By day, I'm a program manager for Tableau Solution Engineering Team. And by night, or at least by Tableau Conference, I'm co-host of I Am Biz. I Am Biz is the world's largest data visualization competition. What began as a breakout session at Tableau Conference back in 2011 has now grown into a global phenomenon and has become a core part of our data plan. Three IMBIS finalists take center stage and have 20 minutes to tell the most compelling story using the same data set. Just like the feeder competition leading up to it, contestants' visas are scored based on analysis, design, and storytelling. It's something you must see to truly understand. Today, we'll be going behind the scenes where my co-host, Andrew Cockfrey, and finalist, Brittany Rosenau, will be watching her live build back and chatting through some key moments and decisions behind her final build. With that, it's over to you, Andy. Okay, well, thanks, Archana, and uh, here we go, Brittany. Let's uh, relive the joy of Ironviz. Uh, so, what was the first thing you wanted to do in getting this build going? It looks like formatting. What's um, yes? What, what, what's your formatting choices all about? Um, so, doing all the formatting first saves a lot of time having to go back and change things. So, I wanted to set globally using the same fonts throughout. Kill all my grid lines. Uh, set a couple default colors that I knew I was going to be using as like my baseline. Um, and then, yeah. Back, and then you're off. Right now, is, is that something, is that something you do with every workbook? Are you always changing those defaults before you get going? Or is that an iron viz specific thing? How, how does it work in practice? In practice, I try and do it, but the reality is I end up going back and changing things. And then if I had to rebuild it again, I could probably do it in twice the time that I did, you know, starting out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? it, it it's like the good intentions is get your formatting done at the start, but often the format, the, the, the exploration drives some of the formatting choices. I think. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in in the in the final, you were the first out of the gate with a viz on screen within what within the first minute and a half. Uh, and as I said during the competition, I'm like, well, what is this hot mess of spaghetti thing? <laughs> so what's going on in this chart? And tell me the actual reason it, it's actually an interesting chart in this shape. Yeah. So um, I had seen a trick before of using real data to make sort of like a PowerPoint background. So mm -hmm. I wanted to use that trick. And when I was digging into the data, I found that that city's targets were kind of a hot mess all over the board. And we thought like, well, wait a second, that might actually be compelling is to show it first as a hot mess and then apply different sorts, apply different ways of looking at the same set of data and seeing whether or not we can make sense of it throughout. Cool. Uh, I'll come back to that. But there's something I noticed during the build as well. Tell me, you've added reference lines here yes. and removed all the axes and grid lines. So are these reference lines grid lines or reference lines? Uh, I'd say they're reference lines. And part of why I wanted to do that is I wanted to avoid, and this is why I've got blue, gray, yellow as my uh, things before. It, it saves time. And I wanted to not have to put another color legend somewhere on the page. Mm -hmm. So I wanted it to be pretty minimal looking and um, yeah, using, using the reference lines allowed me to put more data points on without, you know, people don't need to see where's 90%, where's 80%, yeah. um, just bare necessities. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was a really nice touch because it, it you know, it's almost a way of, uh, you know, you could hard code grid lines using that right. technique if you, if you wanted to um blue gray and yellow we saw that as the palette name yeah uh but again that the, the your color choices were important as well do you want to tell me something about those yeah so it was it was funny looking through the different pdfs for all these cities sustainability programs we started noticing a lot of them used very similar color palettes um so i actually stole some of the colors from las vegas's sustainability plan um and then worked in some other colors as well and i wanted to avoid using like red or green for like good or bad um because as we found out like some cities that said they were green maybe maybe weren't so green uh -huh. um, so i wanted to kind of contrast um you know colors that'll stick out but also if you're sitting back in the audience can you still see the difference between the colors um you know, does it yeah. does it make sense? Yeah, 
actually, let's just take a step back. For those that maybe didn't watch uh, the final yet or, or it's forgotten already, just tell me, so you, you've talked about targets and cities. Just explain yeah. what this data is and how, that, how it relates to those two things. Yeah, so this data has um, cities have different targets to get to net zero, which is reducing or offsetting their carbon impact. Um, so in my iron viz, I narrowed it down to three different cities that had sort of consistent data throughout and took a look at how they compared to each other, um, what their mix of energy was compared to, are they hitting their targets or not? Right. Excellent. And what was that data exploration like? Were you, did you use Tableau prep? Um, I did use do... Tableau prep. Yeah. yeah. And it was, um, that was my first time using Tableau prep and it was pretty fun. Um, what was really helpful is it allowed me to see where the different holes were because, you know, we, we'd go down one path and say like, Oh, that's, that's kind of a dead end there. So we'd yeah. go back and try something else. Um, it's interesting too with IronViz, you know, in the feeder, you're allowed to find whatever data you want. And in the final, you've you've got what you've got. So you really have to dig into what data you have to find find the story. And and uh I quite like your story because it was a story about the poor quality of the data. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's what, is so it, okay, do you do you want to unleash some uh, emotion about the data set? <laughs> well, it's 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 just kind of you know, we you see a lot of beautiful dashboards built on Superstore, which is a super clean data set and everything works perfectly. And then you get into the real world and yeah. you find that like, oh, people aren't reporting consistently. Oh, data wasn't collected consistently. Uh, there was one column that I had to laugh at that's, that was labeled like, please make sure this adds up to 100%. And of course it didn't uh, what? add up to 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't add up to 100%. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, so we hilarious. just had to had to find, you know, narrow it down, narrow it down, find which cities had complete data for what we wanted to tell and, and run with it. <laughs> That's just terrible. Um, so we've we've skipped past the waterfall chart. So maybe we'll come back to that when it reappears. But so th this is po possibly the, the, the place where you pushed yourself into the realms of uh extravagant non-analytical visits perhaps um yeah. why, why did you what what's this showing and why did you want to do this choice why did you make this choice so i really wanted to show um out of the out of the cities that we had the data for i wanted to visualize a target and i thought whoa like making something that sort of looks like a bullseye would would get visually a target across mm -hmm. um and then people could see like oh here's kind of a proportion of cities that fall into these different ranges Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, I, I, I was like, there was borders, there was color choices, there was size of circles. What we don't see in the build is how many iterations did you go through before you decided on every pixel size of each of those circles? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the true reality of of, of any build process with, with IronViz or not, right? You, yeah. You know, you're doing the an analysis and that design choice simultaneously, and it's 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 a powerful part, but it can be a rabbit hole, right? It, it sure is. Yeah. And then going back, like, oh, was the version we tried five versions before actually better than this one? Yeah, I think it was. Let's go back. <laughs> you know, a you know, a feature I would love in Tableau is to be able to see a film strip of all the things you built. Yeah. And then not not undo back to that. I mean, sometimes you'd want to undo, but sometimes you just want to go. I want to pluck that sheet out and that view out, and then you know, again because it was really useful. So definitely. I have asked our dev team for that. Right now, um, let's talk about fonts uh, and yeah. and in fact your whole story style because you you did something I think pretty unique in IronViz. Uh, so tell me what you were trying to achieve and why it, why it was important for IronViz. So um, I really wanted you know it's it's when you're submitting for the feeder you know that people are going to be looking at this on a screen and scrolling on their desktop probably. And for IronViz on stage, it was really important to me that it would look good on a big screen. So I chose to make my font sizes very large. Um, I wanted to make sure that the people sitting in the back had just as good of a chance of not missing anything as mm -hmm. the people that were right up front. <clears throat> um, and so that's why I wanted to keep fonts pretty large throughout. Um, and there's honestly not everything in the story is on the page because I uh -huh. want my speech to kind of fill in the gaps and 
by using a story feature, I wanted to make sure to kind of control the attention mm -hmm. so that people weren't looking at, oh, what, what's that target chart? You know, if I want them looking at this bar chart, I want them only looking at this bar chart. Um, so that's kind um, of the strategy yeah. there. And I, I think, you know, I, I care a lot about how people present data. And so, uh, you know, I, I think this approach is fantastic and, you know, relatively unusual for IVs as well. It's, you know, we, we try and people try and overload the screens, but if you're only showing, if you're only showing one thing at a time, then people can only pay attention to that single thing. It's a very powerful choice. Yeah. Um. So... We've done font size, we've done colors. Uh, we talked about the data exploration. Were, were there other stories you did try and uh, cover that didn't make the, the ended up on the cutting room floor? Yeah, at first it was going to be centered on Las Vegas because I thought, well, we'll all be there, you know, and yeah. everyone will connect to that. Um, I was looking at their energy mix because they've got a lot of solar panel usage yeah. that skyrocketed, which I thought was interesting. And then I would have, I would have thought like, oh, well, maybe should others like sunny places use solar panels, but it it wasn't interesting enough to me. And so I was really mm. struggling to, to kind of continue with that story. And it felt like I was forcing it a bit. So I kind of yeah. had to go back. And once I saw the kind of disconnect with what people were using and how good they said they were doing, that sparked my interest. And then it was a lot easier to work on it because I wanted to find out the answer. Yeah, well, I think that's, you know, and that's, I mean, that's obviously an important lesson for IMVIS, but that that kind of stuff applies for any analyst trying to find insights in their data, in their organization. And the the the, the, the things that are interesting to you are probably the ones you will find and, you know, maybe make business changing discoveries. Down. Yeah. Um, right. So we didn't talk about the waterfall chart. So Our just for those who haven't seen a waterfall chart before, tell tell me what's, what, 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 how, what, can you explain that chart type? Yeah, so waterfall, you've got um, on the left, we've got like the total, and then you've got the components that are leading up to that total. So for this case, it was uh, carbon emissions, and then different things that take away from someone's carbon emissions. And highlighted in yellow are the ones that end up getting talked about later on in the story. Yeah. Um, and just kind of showing proportionally, like, if you can reduce your emissions overall, that's going to have a bigger impact than if you're, you know, trying to store carbon underground or something like that. Yeah, that's great. And and you use story points as well. Uh, do you use story points in in the business life of a tablet user, or was, was or, or or not? And if not, and why the choice for Invis? Um, I haven't used it as much in in business, just because it does take a little more time to set up. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's better suited for a presentation than like an exploratory report that are, you know, more of the things I work on on a day to day, yeah. but in a presentation setting, it's, it's really neat because you can do different formatting. You can kind of control the flow of how people are clicking through something. Um, and there's other features that I didn't show in iron Viz with stories that are really neat that allow you to do like you know, apply different filters without having to recreate your entire dashboard over and over again. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, we get almost close to the end. What was it? Tell me, what was the experience like? What was it like walking out in front of 6,000 people and then having to do your speech, you know, and all the preparation and the aftermath? How, how was the I'm Visit experience? It was, it was insane. It was, you know, you can, you can prep for it. You can anticipate what it might be like, but actually walking out and seeing, you know, full stadium and then being able to pick out like, oh, there's so-and-so, oh, there's so-and-so is, uh, is really fun. It was really yeah. cool. It's quite something, right? Because obviously we rehearsed that walkout five yeah. or six times, but it's, it's no substitute for <laughs> when, when the stadium is actually full uh, yeah. of people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so here we go. So th this is we're back to this noisy chart, right? Now, now that this chart has meaning, but yes. this is your intro slide, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, what, putting putting the credits in. <laughs> yes, always good. Um, yeah. th just just tell me what well, actually what what does the height of those bars represent? So the bars are. Um, how close a city is to meeting their target. So you see the yellow ones are people that are 75% or closer to their target, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
Oh. Is that right? I can't remember. This is right, why well. blue, yellow, blue, <laughs> yellow, gray, blue, yeah, blue, blue, yellow, gray. So the, the, yeah. the size of the bars is how close they are to the target and the color yeah. is which band they fell in. Okay. Fair enough. All right. And so I know we're coming to the, near, nearly the end of the build. You know, you, you have now gone through the feeder and experienced Einviz uh, as a keynote. What advice would you give to people watching who maybe haven't, are thinking about entering the feeder and go for it next year? What advice for Einviz would you give? I would say, first of all, just enter, go for it, because uh, you never know, you might win. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as far as the feeder goes, uh, or the final, you know, find find a story you're really interested in, because if you're interested in the story, that makes it um, a lot easier. And, you know, at every choice I made, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with how the final build en ended up. So I haven't really spent too much being like, oh, what if I did this? What if I did mm -hmm. that? Um, because at the end of the day, I still am really proud of the story we found and the way we told yeah. it. And it's easy to get caught up in like, oh, well, you know, lots of other people do maps or maybe my color choices weren't as flashy. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you build something that you're proud of and you're happy with, it's, you know, win or learn, you can't lose. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Right. And and I, I mean, what I think what I found really gratifying this year is that all three of the finalists and even in the feeders, the, 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 the people getting through the feeders and then what you you all built was I'm going to use the word simple, but not in any derogatory way. You know, it you can do incredible analysis, design and storytelling with crisp, clear techniques. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, and that's yeah. that's the thing is like you know we get a short amount of time to become an expert in this data set, and everyone mm. else hasn't had that luxury. So I had to think like, okay, if if my parents are watching this, my siblings are watching this, my grandparents are watching this, will they be able to understand you know what I've put together? And that was sort yeah. of a guiding thing for me is can someone that hasn't seen this data before understand what I'm what I'm trying to tell them? Yeah. Now, now you're doing something. The final touch you, you're making is something I like. You're hiding everything. Yeah. Uh, to, to always pass on a workbook. For me, I'm like, as, as much as you can hide. I was wondering, though, could you not just select multiple things and hide them all in one click? I could have saved you a few I don't, seconds. I don't know. I don't think I've tried that. I'm going to have to yeah. do that after, the, after this. You, you can do a control <laughs> click, right click, and hide everything all in one go. So there you go. Yeah, you could have saved an yourself. Extra, like 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I think uh, we are about done. Is that is that right? Yeah. I think that's yeah. that's pretty much it. So what, what was the moment? What, what did it feel like? So, yeah, I think we'll we'll pause there. Yeah. Um, and obviously for those watching you can go and watch how Brittany told the story with the other cont contestants in the Ironviz recording which is available on Salesforce Plus and YouTube what was it like when the mouse was down well you still had to do the presentation what was the sense of relief like after you'd done the presentation oh after the presentation it was it was just like a weight had been lifted you know we've, we've all of us you know yourself included you know we been through the whole process we've been through yeah. rehearsals and it was just kind of like a we did it <laughs> like no matter the outcome was it was like we did it we got through it it was a great show um yeah, yeah just kind of a sense of relief that's fantastic uh and uh what well, would you would you answer a feeder again do you reckon you'd ever want to go back or are you going to leave that to the next generation of iron visitors uh the competitive part of me thinks it'd be fun to enter again the realistic part of me is you know it was it's a lot. It's a pretty intense uh, couple of weeks. And, yeah. you know, it was a great experience. And I don't want to deny anyone else having that. So I'll be I'll be more excited, I think, to to sit on the sidelines now and watch what watch what everyone else does. I think that's entirely reasonable. Well, Brittany, thank you so much for taking us through your build. Uh, where can we find you online, social media? Oh, in all the usual corners. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, got a little blog out there um what's, what's the url for the blog um, the, for the blog that's on medium if you search Brittany rosenau i all should right. come up i think all I'm right we'll go it. follow keep up with Brittany. all right well Brittany, thank you again for taking the time and everybody watching we'll see you in the iron fist feeders and maybe on the big stage next year thank you thanks Andy. Bye.